Guys, welcome. Done home week 20. Can't believe we made it to week 20. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, guys, uh, to everyone who's obviously purchased the box this week. And uh, equally, thank you to everybody who's put, uh, purchased the box up until week 20. Absolutely amazing. So, uh, on, straight away onto the, uh, onto the menu for this week. We have a beautiful uh, Cotswold crunch uh, loaf, uh, as usual. That goes in zero in at 180 degrees for five minutes. And as always, guys, on all my butter, make sure that. Uh, you turn out of the, uh, the box as soon as it gets delivered, and the temperature is nice and soft to spread onto your loaf. So, onto your starter. And your starter this week is uh, absolutely delicious, actually, to be fair. So, first of all, you have a beautiful uh, katsu curry uh, cod fritter or organic uh, Atlantic cod. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put that straight into the oven at 180 in that, in that takeaway container. Uh, you can put it onto a tray if you'd like to, but you may as well just put it straight into the container, make good use of it. Put it in there between five to six minutes just until it's cut it beautifully, uh, obviously heated and cooked through uh, because essentially you're going to use a very uh, lightly fried it uh, just to obviously make sure it's all outside and nice and cooked. So then it's putting it straight in the oven, five to six minutes until it's nice and piping hot. If you want to test it with a knife, I'll just put the knife uh, into the middle, put it on the tip on the lid, it's nice and hot, so that it's not going to pop it into the other two Okay, So I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to come back, talk, talk about the garnish and we'll come back after, pause the video, and we'll come back when the coffee uh, is just cooked, and I'll show you how to make it, okay guys? So, six minutes, and you will have for the garnish, you'll have, and it's just for one person, so you'll have a nice fruit top of carrot and mooli salad, which uh, the carrot uh, itself has just been pickled, and the mooli has just been uh, lightly steamed, just to take that raw edge off. We also have a satay uh, sauce for two people. I'd recommend to warm that very gently. So in the microwave, 20 seconds, absolutely perfect. Then you have some uh, roasted salted peanuts uh, for a nice bit of texture. And then you have a delicious uh, coriander oil, which is for two people again. So I'm going to, when that's about five minutes, I'm going to put that in the microwave for 20 seconds, just to heat through. And then I'm going to pop my uh, salad into a little mixing bowl and then gently mix it all together. And then uh, and I'll just start baking. So I'll see you in about four to five minutes, guys, and I'll go for baking with you. Okay guys, so it's been five minutes, uh, with the fish cake in the oven, uh, so I'll literally just pour the uh, satay sauce, nice and warm. I don't, you can have it really hot if you want to, but I'll just, just, just warm it through, it's perfect. Uh, some coriander uh, oil and the peanuts. I've just popped the salad into uh, a small little mixing bowl, and I'm about to get the uh, fruits around that. Okay guys, so it's been fresh cod uh, and a delicious katsu as well. So that's been in there, yeah, literally six minutes, guys. So as I said to you, do do, do that knife check at home. Make sure it is uh, it's obviously timing up in the centre uh, to ensure that, that fish is, uh, is nice and cooked. Uh, so that's there, beautiful piece there. So really, really simple. Just pop that on the side of your plate, if it's a good plate, however you would like to. The reason why I put the salad into the mixing bowl is literally just to make sure that you put all the mood in the carrots all together so it's not sort of on top of each other. Um, and what you can do, you can, if you want to dress that, you can dress it in the oil if you'd like to. I'm going to finish the plate up with the oil, but you can dress that in the oil. Obviously the pickle liquor is still on the carrot, so there's a beautiful little bit of acidity on there anyway, so you haven't got to worry too much, but a nice little cloosh of that to the right hand side. And then with your, um, with your satay sauce, it's up to you. I mean, you can put, well, I could say, you could put like a nice big spoonful on the bottom and then bait it on top, or you can like drizzle it around like I'm going to do a bit. So again, it's totally up to you, is, it is sort of like a sauce. Uh, it's quite thick, but it is like a sauce, so you can sort of, just a bit of a time, almost just sort of drizzle it, drizzle it sort of around, quite, quite sort of messy. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to split the, uh, that sauce with a little bit of the coriander oil as well, so a little bit of the um, peanuts on there for a bit of texture, which will be lovely. And then finally, the coriander oil. Pop that over your salad, and more importantly, sort of split that satay with the oil as well. So it's super, super vibrant. So, oh, beautiful. So, again, it's a real nostalgic starter. So, you've got your beautiful Atlantic cod and uh, katsu curry uh, fritter with your pickled moon, uh, pickled uh, carrot and moon salad, your satay sauce, and your uh, beautiful coriander oil. Just split it out as well, guys. Then. Enjoy. Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoyed your starter, uh, beautiful fish cake uh, with your uh, your satay sauce. It was absolutely delicious. So I want to make course guys, you have a beautiful piece of uh, Woody Park Farm pork belly, which obviously has been brined 
24 hours and then cooked for a further 24 hours as it's literally ready to roast into a pan. A beautiful pale onion. If you smell that, it smells really beery, which is uh, delicious. And there is some uh, uh, savoy cabbage with uh, smoked bacon and reduced cream. It's got cream savoy cabbage. Uh, your pork crackling or your pork pups, which is just there, which obviously will keep. Uh, blood orange ketchup. It goes really, really well to sort of grate that sort of acidity and the acidity rate through really well the richness of the fat of the pork. And obviously the cream cabbage. And you've got a thyme and onion puree, which is there, and a little five spice uh, pork sauce, which basically we've used uh, sauce uh, with that sort of with cinnamon, salami, cloves, garlic, thyme, etc. So it's a really nice sort of gentle five spice coming through. So, uh, handwork is just the onion and the pork. So, come over here and I will show you how to re really these two. So, guys, over here, non stick pan. As always, you don't need it as large as that, obviously, it's literally just for the pork and onion, so but these are the only ones we have. So, put a little bit of oil in there. The pan's been on a seriously low heat for about, about I'd say, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, but again, you don't, uh, don't worry about sort of having it really hot to start off with. It's more, you're more than happy or you're more than, more than beneficial to sort of build the heat of the pan as you come into it. The most important thing is if you press down on that pork. So very gently, you can just very, very lightly here that sizzle and then crackle. So what we do is we just very gently press that down and then I'll turn it up. So that's when you do the pan, the pan itself will start coming up to a nice, nice heat. What I'll do though is I'll just show you that you'll start to blister the skin very slightly as it goes on. But again, I said the most important thing is to push that ball down all the time. Some of the fat and then the sort of the cooking sort of stock will start to melt a little bit and come off, but don't worry about that, it's absolutely fine. So very gently just press that, and make sure you get the oil in there as well so it all starts to sort of crackle and roast and pop. And then that probably depends on the opposite of the heat of your pan, I'll be between four to five, maybe to six minutes. So I'm going to gently just start to roast that up in there. Join me when we get a nice colour on there. So I'll just show you now in about 30 seconds, we'll just slowly start to see if it's doing, okay? So we'll leave that on there. Come back in five to six minutes and we'll, I'll show you obviously how far I've taken it and then we'll add the uh, the onion and then a little bit of butter and pop it in the oven. Okay guys, we'll see you in about five minutes. Okay, so it's literally been guys about three to four minutes, probably about four minutes actually on the pork. So I've just kept on sort of spinning it around, making sure I'm pushing down every now and again, but obviously as it softens, you want to be careful pushing it down. It's, it's only really beneficial at the start when it's more firm, especially the flesh side. It's all starting to heat up now, but as you can see, it's got a beautiful golden brown color. All that is completely roasted. It starts to get a nice sort of firm skin on it now as well. So that's the sort of the crackling and the sort of roasted part that we're looking for. So with the ale and the end that we've obviously already roasted quite heavily, I'll pop that into a skin side pan. It won't, it won't through any more unless obviously you leave it in there for a period of time, which we're not going to. So I'll turn that off and there's a the little knob of butter in there. And then uh, the knob of butter this time isn't for luxurious, it's for that little bit you need that the pan is a little bit of liquid. So it's, it's really really beneficial if you put a little butter in there. Obviously water will evaporate, so it's pointless. You can put a bit more oil in if you like to, it's not very nice, you don't want a shallow fry it. Put a little bit of butter in there, just to get a little bit of liquid and moisture in there, and that will caramelise absolutely beautifully. So leave that skin side down. Obviously the same with the onion, leave it all skin side down, and we'll pop it in the oven. And I'll take between, in this oven, because it's quite it's a large piece, but it's quite thin, it'll probably take about six to seven minutes to heat, heat right through. So I'll put it on there for yeah, between six to seven minutes, Join me and we'll go back through to the garnish um, to come back, okay? Okay guys, so it's been here for uh, seven minutes the pork belly has, and with the oxygen of the onion. What I've just quickly done, I've just pop my uh, onion and thyme puree in the microwave. Obviously the ketchup's at room temperature as is the pork uh, crackling. And on the stove, I've just gently heated through the cream savoy cabbage with smoked bacon. And I've also popped my, uh, my sauce on as well, so that'll be ready in about 30 to 60 seconds. So I'll get the pork out. Super, super hot. I'm just going to get a little uh, spatula thing to get them in the meat. I don't want it to uh, slip off. So, very carefully remove your onion. Obviously, that might be hot, so do be careful. And the pork itself is super, super soft now. And uh, it should be nice and dark and crispy on the skin side. It absolutely is. So, again, yeah, don't worry about those little pieces that come off. That's just a little bit of the fat sort of it's sort of pressing out. So, again, don't worry about that. It's, it's all available in the, the day. As you can see, it's nice and crispy. The reason for that guys is because you need to roast it sort of gently but putting in a decent moderate heat. If it's too low it will just boil and it won't crisp and 
if it's too high, obviously burns. Just make sure you get that sort of nice level of heat. So you just crisping it with a nice little bit of fat, a little bit of oil, and then obviously adding the butter to it as well, which, as I said to you before, it will still fry in the oven at 180 degrees. So over seven minutes on that, guys, okay? So it's it beautiful and crisp on the top. Onion's nice and hot. Well, the cabbage is completely warm through now as well, so it's pretty much ready to plate. I would uh, recommend doing the cabbage in a pan so you've got more control than over an intense heat in the uh, in the microwave. But again, you can you know if you're in those pan, pan space or anything on there, you can you can put it in the microwave for no trip at all. So the onion and thyme puree, as I always say, guys, nice big sort of dollop of that on the side, and then uh, pork belly just in behind it. Spoon of the cream cabbage, obviously, is one portion you'll have to be fair. We put absolutely loads of the cream cabbage inside. Alternatively, you can obviously put it into the side, into a little side bowl and have it as a little side complement. If you'd obviously like the uh, if you'd obviously like the um, you know, the plates are quite minimalistic, that's sometimes quite nice. I'm just going to bring that round the pork belly a little bit closer. And then uh, your ketchup and orange and orange and pork isn't really a you know regular thing, but the blood orange is a different sort of flavour, and it just work really well with the pork. It's almost like it's that acidity that sort of cuts through it, um, like apples essentially. Uh, so a little spoon of that on the side as well, beautiful. And then as I always put these, I think mean, these are lovely. I season these little pork crackling with it's called granite, the pork granite. So I season these with a little bit of yeast powder and obviously salt as well. It's quite strong. But I wouldn't just don't, don't sauce them because obviously they'll go really really soft. This is the only protein I always say to the people you don't have to sauce this protein, okay? Because the, as soon as the liquid hits the, hits the skin, obviously the pork will go, will go a little bit too soft. So there's my beautiful sauce, obviously, comes to the heat. I'll just grab a fresh spoon there. This is a super flavour, you know, it's got those wintry sort of vibes as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful dish. And then just literally you can smell all that beautiful five spice sort of flavours coming up and just very gently in the centre of your, the center of, your uh, of your plate, very very gently season that just arrange those a little bit better. There we are. And there we are guys. Your beautiful roast pork belly with a nice crisp skin, pork crackling on top, onion puree, blood orange ketchup, your cream savoy cabbage and your beer roasted or your ale roasted onion. Enjoy guys. Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoyed the main course. I uh, thought the blood um, orange and the pork was just awesome. It's really nice contrast. So onto your dessert and final course guys, you have a beautiful amaretto and almond sponge cake. It's just delicious, absolutely delicious. A really moist and, uh, and that amaretto and almond is delicious. Uh, chocolate mousse guys, that's obviously got one person in there, so you have one that's a little bit uh, bigger. It's a beautiful uh, amarina cherries that are super rich with a beautiful cherry syrup as well in there and then get your uh, honey and maple granola and a little bit of texture. So uh, listen guys, this cake is absolutely delicious cold uh, or at room temperature. I'm just gonna be very gently warm in the oven. I'll turn the oven up like I always do, literally 30 to 60 seconds. Now I love that hot cake, very slightly warm, but honestly, it eats, to some people think it eats better cold anyway, so it's totally up to you. But I personally, just gonna pop it into the oven just for literally yeah, 30 to 60 seconds, just to warm through gently. While that's warming up, I'm just going to tell you or to talk to you with the mousse. The mousse is obviously to share, uh, just a nice soft mousse. Uh, so I get a little sort of gently warm, warm your knife, very gently through. And what I enable it to do is I'll cut through the mousse nice and nice and neatly in the product to your plate and look a lot neater. And also put a little bit of a well in, so you can almost just sort of dress your cherries in that well. Again, it's a table of like forest cattle at the end of the day, or certainly the chocolate elements are, so it will really sort of take that, that sort of deep sort of black forest cherry sort of roots. And then the other, the, the, uh, the, the granola itself is just pure enough with a little bit of texture on there as well. So, right, I'm gonna get the cake, put in there one place, 60 seconds, it's all it needs. There we go. Nice and hot, I can pull the tray out. I can tell it's definitely not warm. So it's warm through very, very gently. So pop that into your bowl. I'm always put it a bit off center to the left. I'll grab a reasonably warm, um, warm spoon, it's warm very gently on the, uh, Cold perfect. Okay, so yeah, with, with that, just one scoop, put that to one side. It's a beautiful, rich, decadent mousse. As you can see, I'm just going to put that to you. I've just made a tiny little well with the back of my spoon. 
And what that'll do, that'll hold the cherries. A little tip I always used to do, we always used to do like ice creams in the, some of the restaurants that we worked and we sort of fill, uh, fill the well uh, with, you know, if it, was, uh, if it was anything like fruit or an oil or whatever. So you've got six of these, and you might have 23 each, you might have the sound of them, and it's, they're so rich. If you have any more, you just spoil the whole entire dish up. So very gently pop those into that well, and again, you've got loads of syrup, so pop that all over the chocolate, just like this, beautiful. It already looks like a black forest cat already. And then with your granola, optional guys, you don't have to. So just grab a pinch of a few of those and then pop those just sporadically sort of in and around the top of your cherries. And there we are. Look at that. that is a lovely end to quite a delicious three course meal to be fair. So there we are. Beautiful almond sponge cake, almond amaretto sponge cake with chocolate mousse filled with those amarina. Uh, sort of dark, dark cherries uh, with the cherry syrup and granola on top and that looks eat absolutely beautifully bring back some serious sort of nostalgic memories of that forest ghetto and uh, to finish guys we've done a new flavour or should I say Mike using a new flavour white chocolate and uh, mint fudge we using a lovely mint essence and I think that the fudge itself arguably may be the best one we've had so sprinkle a little bit of salt on top of there enjoy that with your tea coffee after I was trying to and uh, yeah hopefully you enjoy that all the entire thing Thank you so much again for purchasing the box. If you haven't purchased one yet, we've got five boxes left. So if you like what you see, guys, email or email or something or myself, then we'll get a box sorted out to the local or nationwide delivery. Um, other than that, have a fantastic weekend. We will see you same time, same place next week for a collaboration. So uh, collaboration for next week, which I can't wait for. Uh, I'm treating you to another Michelin star chef. Uh, which is absolutely amazing, the support is fantastic. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that in the next coming days, and otherwise, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.